Let's talk about the equation for the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution and how it's controlled by the particle size or molecular mass, particle mass, and the temperature. Now what I've done here is written out the entire equation for the probability that a particle is traveling at a certain speed. After all, a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution is a probability density function that is based off of the speed of the particle. Lots of textbooks will write V here for velocity of the molecule. I'm using X because I think it's more intuitive for high school math students. What I want you to see here is where the M's and T's are. So the probability that a particle is traveling at a certain speed is affected by the particle size here inside of the to the power of three halves term, and here inside the negative, the numerator of the negative exponent on E. E is 2.718 approximately. It's a constant. The point is it's a positive number bigger than one. So it, how is the probability affected by these m's? Well, the places where the m's are, are m to the power of three halves and e to the power of negative m. Again, x squared over 2kt, all of that's staying constant if we're only talking about molecular mass. Now, math-wise, I want you to see the curves for x to the power of three halves and e to the negative x. x to the three halves is somewhere in between a straight line, y equals x, and a parabola, y equals x squared, because this exponent is 1.5, which is between 1 and 2. So, I don't know, it kind of looks like a parabola. It's not, but you can think about it that way if you're just trying to get an intuition here. e to the power of negative x, or a negative exponent, is exponential decay. And now what I want you to see is that what we're doing to figure out what the probability is, is multiplying some things together. One of them is the particle size to the power of 3 halves, times some stuff times e to the power of negative particle size. So what that means is that we're taking this function and multiplying it by this function and some constants as well. That's why here at 0 comma 0, no matter how high this, uh, or no matter what the x value is here, when you multiply 0 times literally anything, you're going to get 0. That's why all of these Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions start at 0, comma 0. And the higher you get, the more the exponential function dominates over a regular polynomial. Um, that's called something in calculus, but I kind of forget what right now. The point is that this asymptote of the exponential decay function is why they all approach, but never quite hit, the horizontal asymptote here. So these curves are a hybrid of the parabolic increase, which you can kind of see here, and the exponential decay down towards, but not quite reaching, zero here. And then there's a peak where they fight and can't start to cancel each other out. So at a lower m, the term that's dominating this function is m to the 3 halves. And at the higher m, the term that's dominating is e to the negative m. It's the exponential decay. So the higher the molar mass, or particle size, I guess I should say, the higher the curve is on the left half of the peak, where it's this curve dominating, right? The heavier the particle, the higher the m, the more steeply parabolic it's going to be here, and it'll decay towards zero faster as well. Now, temperature works similarly, but actually opposite. I've written it like this, even though there are exponent rules you can, you can use to flip this to a positive t. But I want you to think about, as t increases here, 1 over t is going down. The larger the denominator, the smaller this thing is. And similarly, 
the larger t is, the smaller this number is. So 1 over t is actually acting in the exact same way as the m's were here. Replace that m with 1 over t, replace that m with 1 over t. Now that doesn't mean, I, that doesn't quite mean that they're perfect inverses of each other, but what it does mean is that increasing the temperature has the opposite effect as increasing m. If you take a look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann curves for mass, the heavier particles with the higher m have their peak up here. If you look at the Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions for temperature, it's the lower temperatures that have their peak in the same place. Now I just created videos for molecular mass and temperature, but I want to show you how similar these two curves end up being to each other. I eyeballed these, but the point is that up here on the top left, you have both low T and high M, both peaking in the upper left. And it's the higher T, lower M, that peak on the bottom right. In fact, when I was doing university chemistry and they asked me for Maxwell-Boltzmann curves based on molecular mass and then later on temperature, I drew the same curves. Like, it's the same set of three. The difference is that the curves are spreading out to higher speeds for lower molecular mass and comparatively for higher temperatures. That is all borne out in the actual equation for the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. 1 over t has the same effect as particle size. Here we go. I don't know if I made this any clearer, but it's my best effort, and I wish you best of luck.